Is there anything more challenging than promoting yourself, than talking about yourself, than having to sell your own product that you made to someone else? Oh my gosh, it's so stressful. It makes you it want you want to like shrink inside yourself and like you die a little bit. Nope, nope, we don't. We actually work really hard to get to a place where we have the confidence to sell ourselves and the product and the company that we have worked so hard on. So today I'm answering your number one business question to me, which is, Rach, how do I promote myself for my business? You've spent all of this time and energy to build your Etsy shop or get your first kit from Noonday or you're selling Rodin and Fields or you're doing LuLaRoe or whatever it is and you want so badly like you got all this stuff and you're super excited, but dang it, now you're embarrassed to sell. I'm sorry, my accent shows up. Sail. My grandma would say, we're gonna sail something today, sister. How do you sort of get the courage or develop the skills to sell the thing that you have worked so hard to build? Even if you don't have your own business, I think a lot of times it's hard for women to sell themselves in the workplace during a job interview or you wanna get promoted or you wanna make a good impression. You wanna make a good impression on your boss. How do you do that? So as always, I have my post-it notes. I just sort of wrote down the things that I think really helped me feel confident in selling myself. And it's worth saying, I have been an entrepreneur for almost 14 years. So um, for a solid decade, I was a high-end event planner and wedding planner here in Los Angeles. And now I run this digital media company where oftentimes I am in front of the camera, like, hello, I'm making this video right now. I'm also the head of sales. So I'm also the one that's talking to clients about collaborating and working on a project together. So. I am selling myself on a really big level. It's not just like, oh, will you buy this necklace that I made? It's like, will you pay, you know, $100,000 to have my company collaborate with yours? So, so I know what it means to sell in very small ways. You know, hey, can I sell you a centerpiece for your event? All the way up to, can I sell you on a really big level? And I feel like the stuff that helped me when I was, earlier in my career and I was selling on a smaller level is the same stuff that helps me today. And it's fun, I think, to talk about the fact that I actually, just before I did this video, I sent an email, which is probably my seventh time following up with a client to try and get a job that I really, really want, which that'll be a whole other video that I make about cold calls versus warm calls versus leads versus all of that stuff. But today it's just about how do you sell? And I think, I hope that y'all are gonna find this helpful. I did not look online. I don't know what other people say about this topic. This is just like Rachel's business advice. Take that with a grain of Salt. I think the first thing that you need to realize is that 75% of the time in business, whether you work for someone else or you own your own thing, you are selling yourself. Even when you have a product, even when you're selling something that you made, if you're interacting with a client, what they're buying into is you. So I think one of the most important, like if you don't take anything else away from this video, take this bit of advice. Confidence is what matters most. If you are scared to sell, if you are scared to talk about your company, the service that you offer, the thing that you have to give the world, if you're, if you're nervous about that, it's because you're not confident. And the two ways that I know of to gain confidence don't laugh at me. What you know and how you look. Now other people might tell you different things, but this is just for me personally, those are what matters most. And you know, I've told you guys before, I have a high school diploma. I have built a company of a staff now of gosh, 12 or 13. We are doing these massive campaigns, these really big projects with huge brands, and every single thing that I know, literally, I learned through trial and error. I learned from Google and YouTube videos like the one that you're watching right now. I know that it's possible to gain massive and incredible knowledge even if you aren't traditionally educated. When I have felt insecure, when I'm afraid to talk about 
my business or myself, the best armor that I know of is knowledge. Knowledge about my industry, knowledge about what other people charge, knowledge about the product that I'm offering you, knowledge about the ways that this is gonna be beneficial. If you are scared to talk about yourself or your company, you need to arm yourself with information. It's only scary to sell if you don't believe in the product. So first of all, do you believe in that what you're selling has value? Do you believe that no matter what it is, a lip gloss or a necklace or skincare or a shirt or your accounting services or you as a law, you as an attorney, like do you believe that those that thing that you're offering can have value to someone who buys it? If the answer is no, you need to not be in business. <laughs> I'm sorry. You have to believe in the product that you're offering, no matter what it is, even if it's a cupcake. You have to believe that like, oh my gosh, I make the best buttercream icing in the state of Virginia, and if you have this cupcake, it's gonna make you pee your pants, and you're gonna be so happy, and it's gonna make your Tuesday so much better. You have to believe in your product. If you don't believe in your product, stop this video now, go back to the beginning, and start again with something that you care about. But if you're like, yeah, I, I do, and I really dig into what I have, I do believe there's value here. I do think this is pretty. I do think that that shirt will make that mom feel cute when she drops off the kids at school. I do believe that my you know, CPA services can be incredibly valuable for a small business. I know the value that it has. We'll start there. So you have confidence about the thing that you're selling now you just need to arm yourself with more information about the industry as a whole. Let's say that you do screen print t-shirts with cute little sayings on them, which is one of my favorite things to buy off Instagram. So let's say that you do that kind of thing and you feel nervous to tell people about it. Well, the first thing I would arm myself with is what are my competitors doing? What's happening in my industry? What trends are really popular? What's the price point that other people sell at? What's the shipping look like? Um, does it take, if it takes, you know, seven days to get my shirt and it takes two days to get her shirt like you need to know what's going on and arming yourself with that information makes you feel more confident because i think what we're afraid of when we talk one-on-one -on -one with a prospective buyer is the questions that they're going to ask us you know what you know but holy crap what if she asks me about like is this non-gmo food product that i put into my cupcake and you don't know the answer. That's what you're afraid of, are the things you don't know. So if you can just arm yourself with a ton of information, it's gonna give you courage. The other thing that gives me confidence, and I don't care if people laugh at this, and I don't care if you write comments below and say, well, sister, you're you know vapid, and you, I don't care. If I don't look good, and I mean like my own version of good, it doesn't have to be your version of good, or it doesn't have to be a supermodel version of good, it just has to be what I think like pulled together. If I don't look good, I don't feel confident. And you don't have to have full makeup and hair every single day of your life. If that's not your vibe, you don't even have to have that ever. But you have your own version of you feeling like you look great. Maybe for you it's a blowout, maybe for you it's full makeup, maybe for you it's like, you don't do makeup, you've got a messy bun, you've got a really cute little workout outfit on, but that's your jam, that's your branding. Whatever it is, you have to know that look that makes you feel really good. And even if it's the same outfit that you wear over and over and over, you do your hair the same way, you do your makeup the same way, there is confidence that comes from feeling good about the way we look. My sister did nails for years, like 15 or 20 years. And I remember when I was little, she's nine years older than me, and I remember her saying she always wanted to dress just a little bit better than her client. She always wanted to be a little bit more buttoned up, a little bit more pulled together than the client that came in who was dressed the nicest because she was offering a service and she wanted you to feel value in that time with her. And I still today remember my big sister Christina saying that. I still, you know, if I'm going to a meeting, there are definitely days, you guys have seen it on Instagram, there are definitely days where I come up in this office like, on Fridays we wear like workout clothes, whatever. But there are definitely days where I come in where I don't look great, but if I'm meeting with a client, if I, and I do all the time, if I'm meeting with a client or someone outside or I know I'm gonna be on a video like this or I know we're gonna do an Instagram story, I, I'm gonna be pulled together because that gives me confidence in my brand. Just one more thought about your brand and what your brand means. You need to know the brand and the style of you. 
There was an incredible Deus episode that I did with my friend Toy Sweeney, if you want to head over to iTunes and find it, about the importance of branding yourself with your own personal style. And that, like your personal style might be rockabilly or goth or whatever, but you should know what it is and you should in order to gain confidence, if you want to set yourself up for success, you better be in your brand. You better look like whatever it is that you've decided is your style every single time you have the potential to sell to someone. I just noticed back here, look, this is my this is my YouTube videos that I have to do and only one of them is red, which means I still need to shoot it, which is how to promote yourself. <laughs> look at me getting things off my list. So the second thing that you need to know for the ability to promote yourself, the ability to sell, as a side note, everybody hates that word. People hate the word sales. They wanna call it business development, they wanna call it branding, they wanna call it networking. Nobody likes to sell. Guess what? Get over it. If you're in business, you are selling something. You are either selling yourself, you're selling your services, or you are selling a product, you're selling. If you're not selling, you're not in business. You can have the greatest Instagram feed, you can have the prettiest business cards and the greatest website, but sister, are you making money? No? Great, you need to start selling. First thing you're gonna have to do is get over the fear of the word sell. Uh, people are like, oh, I hate sales, I hate sales. Get over it. I say that with all the love in my heart, get over it. We are in business and business means you're gonna have to feel confident to be able to talk to someone about the thing that you have to offer, even if that thing is yourself, okay? The second thing that I think really matters in the ability to promote yourself is practice. Practice what you are going to say. You guys know, I talk about this all the time, if you wait until you are in the moment of any situation to try and knock it out of the park, you are in trouble. If you are dieting and you wait until you're starving to figure out what you're gonna eat, you're not gonna do well. If you are parenting and you wait until your toddler is throwing a crazy tantrum and they're tired and you haven't slept in three days, do you think you're gonna make good decisions? No. In the same vein, if you wait until you're standing in front of a group of women with your Noonday product or your Stella and Dot or your Rodin and Fields or your essential oils or whatever thing it is that you're doing, your candles, your Rubbermaid, your, your Pampered Chef, if you're waiting until you're at a party standing in front of a group of women and that's the first time that you really try to work through your pitch, sisters, and brothers, I wanna believe that some, some bros watch this too, you're in trouble. So my best advice is practice. Practice, 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 practice. Write it down, write it down in full paragraphs. And then over and over and over, read it to yourself, read it to yourself, read it to yourself. Now condense it into bullet points. So let's say that I'm gonna to talk to you about selling my book, Smart Girl. It's a great book, it's the last book in a trilogy. It's really great, for, I write all these things down. And then I take all those, I condense them into five sentences with bullets, right? So now I know my five sentences are, talk about that it's the last in the trilogy, talk about the plot line, talk about the love story, talk about that it's based on my marriage, and talk about something else. Those are my five points. Now, you wanna get those five sentences down to five words. So, right, we're trying to make it smaller and smaller. So my five words then would be um, trilogy, plot, marriage, and now all of those are prompts for me because I've practiced so many times. So eventually you wanna to get to a place where you're down to no note cards and you know exactly what you're gonna say. As a quick side note, when I first started um, doing public speaking, in fact, you can see this in the videos. If you watch my public speaking section on, on YouTube, you can see that in my earlier speaking gigs, I'm using note cards because I wasn't as proficient a speaker. And then I got down to just a piece of paper with those bullet points and now I literally, like if you go to our RISE event, I will speak for two days straight without one single note. And it's because I practice over and over and over and over and over. So if you can get down to your bullet points, and you're not giving a speech in front of 2,000 people, you're in a living room with some ladies and that's fine, or you're sitting with your boss, in a one-on-one, -on -one. you don't need, like obviously you can take notes in there, right? But you do need to have practiced what you're gonna say again and again and again. And here's the key, 
You are practicing not so that you can repeat it verbatim. You are practicing so that when the opportunity comes, you have some ideas about what you want to say. Another good example that I have of this is when I go on TV. So I do TV segments a lot and oftentimes producers will give me like 15 things that they want me to make sure that I say and sometimes they're like, hey Rachel, you have seven minutes, which is actually a long time for a segment. Sometimes they're like, oh my gosh, we're over today, Rachel, we need you to say all 15 things and you only have four minutes to do it. Woo! So I will, every single time I go on a show, I'll be back in the green room and I will just say my lines over and over and over and over and over and over so that when we get there, even if the host goes off in a crazy tangent and even if they say something weird and even if something happens, all of these things have happened, something goes horribly wrong on set, I can still fall back on the words that I have said. So I would suggest to you, you write it down, and then as you're driving around in the car, you just say the lines over every time you're thinking, if you're, you're on the treadmill at the gym, you're running outside, you're, um, you know, hang, whatever it is, you are doing your lines. You got your pitch, you know what you're gonna say. The question then is, what is my pitch? Because I'm sure for those of you, especially who are doing um, like direct marketing, you, you the, the companies like give you ideas, right? They say like, here's what you can talk about. You can talk about the fact that we're fair trade or you can talk about the fact that we use only organic products. You can talk about whatever, but that does not compel me in any way. And that does not compel you in any way. So what you need to do when you're setting up your, your bullet points or what you're gonna say in your speech is figure out what makes this uniquely yours. The best salespeople are incredible at telling you a story. And you'll see this all over the place. It's such a buzzword right now and everybody talks about it, the power of storytelling as a, as a way to sell. But even, let me give you an example. As you're watching this video, I've just told you a few stories, right? I told you about going on TV. I told you about when I first started speaking on stage. But those are the moments where we tend to pay more attention to what someone is saying because other people might teach you the same exact topics, but they can't teach you the topics the way I can. This is my own unique style and you have your own unique style. So storytelling, maybe it's picking three products that you want to sell and your own personal story about why you love this statement necklace or how you started using that essential oil and all of a sudden your baby was sleeping through the night because the lavender was in the air and it just smelled so good or how you're so much, um, you're such a better cook now that you're using this particular spatula when you, you know, whip up your thing, whatever. It's the story behind it. And in fact, if you wanna know how I'm able to speak for two days on stage for, you know, like 12 hours, it's because I don't think in terms of bullet points, I don't think in terms of sentences, now all I think is in terms of stories. First I'm gonna tell them a story about this, then I'm gonna tell them a story about how we went to Europe, then I'm gonna tell them a story, and I know the story and the, and the point that I'm trying to make with it, so I divide everything into story. So if you are presenting a ton of product to someone or if you're only presenting one or if you have, a, again, a shop on Etsy where you're trying to sell, tell me the story. Don't just put, you know, here are my quilts. You can say, hey, I'm a mom of three. We live in Montana. Um, we homeschool and in the winter evenings I make quilts with my daughters because it reminds me of the time that I spent with my mom as a child making quilts. That's compelling. If I have to choose between 50 different Etsy shops and 50 different options for quilts, I'm going to be more drawn to the one that I know a story about. Now, if your quilts are ugly, if your product's terrible, I don't care how cute your story is, so you obviously have to start with something good, but all things being equal, I will gravitate to, and you as a human will gravitate to someone who compelled you in a different way. Now I'm gonna circle back to practice because if you have your bullet points and you figured out your story to tell, I want you to practice not just in your car and not just in your room by yourself, but also in front of friends, in front of family. I want you to practice out loud selling to people and getting their notes. And it feels awkward. It's super weird to be like, 
hey, you know, you guys, can I practice on, can I say, it feels so dumb. But if you can't do it in front of your mom or your husband or your best friend or your church group or your book club, you definitely are not going to be able to do it to strangers. So you have got to start pushing yourself into the deep end. You have got to jump into the cold water and just deal with how harsh it feels before you learn how to swim. Otherwise, you're going to hold on to this fear forever. The number four piece of advice I would give you for um, feeling comfortable to promote yourself is get over what other people think. It's the greatest gift you can give yourself as a human being in this wor world, whether you are selling or not, is to stop caring what other people think about you. Because guess what? I heard this years ago. I won't take credit for it because it was Oprah, my Lord and Savior. Years ago on the Oprah show, she said, nerves, nervousness, is a selfish emotion. Nerves are a selfish emotion. You care more about what other people think of you than you care about what you can offer them. Because that's what it is, right? You're nervous because you think I'm gonna mess up and they're gonna make fun of me. Or I'm gonna do something wrong and they're gonna laugh. Or I'm going to embarrass myself. You are making the situation all about you. Nervous is a selfish emotion. So what you can do instead is A, just stop caring, like I don't, I am not gonna care, I'm not gonna put any time and thought into what you think of me. Cause PS, by the way, they're not thinking about you. They're thinking about themselves because that's all we do as humans is worry about ourselves and other people's perception. They're not thinking about you, number one. But two, if you find yourself feeling nervous, flip the script. Stop making it about you. Stop being selfish. Instead, say, what can I offer them today that can be helpful? What are some tips that I could give them that even if they don't buy anything from me, they walk out of this experience with me with more knowledge. Maybe they have more confidence because of the time they spent with me. Maybe they're happier because of a joke that I told them. Maybe they felt less alone because I told a story that made them feel like they were part of a community. Whatever it is, stop focusing on yourself. Stop making it about you and make it about them. Tell them the story, help them get to the answer. What advice can you give them? It's not about you. It's about the person that you're speaking to. Guys, if you liked this, I hope that you will um, comment below and let me know what you thought. Tell me if something was helpful. Tell me if something was way off base. And if you dig it, I hope that you will uh, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. We do at least one new video a week, sometimes way more than that, um, covering everything from, I mean, I'm a working mom. So we cover everything from parenting to work to marriage to I don't know how to make your hair look like this. Uh, thanks for hanging out and I hope that you found it helpful.